I think that certain goals are goals of practices that we've already mastered. So, you know, you're trying to next level what you've already accomplished. And so those goals are going to require a lot less limbic friction, if you will. And you already know how to access the rewards. You actually can predict the rewards and when they come. You actually know what the rewards are. You've really clearly defined them. Those are goals that I think um, we're sort of on autopilot with. And I think everyone should probably check in at the end of the year and say, you know, my, if I'm going to continue along that trajectory, it might make sense for me to set some really concrete goals. Sometimes those are quarterly um, financial quarters or mm -hmm. academic quarters, if that's what the landscape <clears throat> sure. you're in. But I think that um, that doesn't require a lot of us except more of the same, right? But those are nonetheless growth goals. When you feel happy, it's not because you have a brain area that's the happy brain area that is electrically active. Rather, it's going to involve numerous brain areas being active in concert and to different degrees. In the same way that the keys on a piano together played in the appropriate sequence represent a particular song. You would never say that one key on the piano represents that song, but that key is necessary. Similarly, in the brain, we can say that a brain area might be necessary, but not sufficient to give us a particular experience or generate a particular behavior. Whether or not you should act or should not act based on your assessment of the value of a goal at a particular moment in time. Value information about a goal is so key. Here's why. There is basically one neurotransmitter or rather neuromodulator system that governs our goal setting, goal assessment, and goal pursuit, and that is the neuromodulator dopamine. Dopamine is the common currency by which we assess our progress toward particular things of particular value. In fact, dopamine is the way that we assess value of our pursuits. He taught me the right habits to have, daily rituals, you know, for goal achievement versus goal setting. So he said, everybody sets goals. Either they write them down or they don't, they have them in their head, I'm going to teach you how to achieve goals. And so when we feel something, chances are that we're going to release dopamine in the brain, the feel-good uh, neurochemical that activates the reward center of the brain. And chances are if we feel that and we have this positive emotion around it and that neurochemistry is flooding our brain and our body with feel-good chemicals, we're actually activating the motivational center of the brain. And so when we visualize, when we set a goal, when we take an action step, when we emotionalize, when we read our goals, the initial flood of neurochemicals, dopamine, serotonin, feel-good chemicals, and then if we share it with a friend, oxytocin, those three neurochemicals, those are the neurochemicals of goal achievement. So the harder part of the equation is, why am I not doing the things that I know I should be doing? And why am I not doing the things that I could find out easily how to do? The law of Goya is, is simply get off your ass. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you think and you believe and you emotionalize, you visualize, uh, and you create your plan for how am I actually going to achieve this? So what do I need to do? When am I gonna do it? How specifically? How am I gonna uh, tweak it, measure it, and iterate it so that I'm consistently making progress? I learned the value of progress versus perfection little incremental gains every day, every week, every month, every quarter. And even when you move backwards a couple of steps, what's the progress that you made in what you learned? Focusing on a goal line allows people to move more effectively toward that goal. This is something you can leverage in all aspects of all goal pursuits. What happens when we focus on a particular location? Believe it or not, there's an increase in a particular feature of our blood pressure. Well, it turns out that there are neural circuits that link your visual system and focusing on a particular point with that top number, the systolic blood pressure. And when you focus your eyes on a particular location, that systolic blood pressure goes up and there are some other systems that are coordinated with it in your brain and body that start releasing adrenaline, low amounts of adrenaline in most cases, and that adrenaline further readies your body for action. So bringing our visual focus to a particular location does a number of things to the brain and the whole system of the body to prepare it, to place it into a state of readiness that makes us more likely to lean into our goals, into action. When we take, let's say, visualization, 
right? And you start to see yourself, even if the picture is not clear in your mind, of achieving the next level of your success, whether it's releasing weight and keeping it off, getting into a relationship that you love and are happy, and whether it's to make two or three or five times more money and live a, a certain type of lifestyle that allows you to do the things that freedom uh, with having money allows you to do. If you start in your mind first and you impress that through conscious efforts into the subconscious mind, it then causes thoughts and emotions and behaviors. And what we see is principally important in defining what we do in the immediate term, even if what we see relates to something in the far off distance. To bridge the gap between where you are now and the goals you intend to reach. A lot of times I have people tell me things like, well, Tony, you know, you're successful in your life because, you know, after all, you're so motivated. I'm just lazy. I tell people, you're not lazy, you just have infinite goals. <laughs> what we want to do here is get some goals that will drive you, some goals that got some power behind them. And the way to do that, realize that right now you're about to create a real future that can make a major difference for you. That right now you're not just writing words down on a page, that even though you don't know how this is going to happen yet, that if you get something that you really want and you make it strong enough and you find strong enough reasons, you will find a way. Everyone has goals. but. Some seem to accomplish far more than others. That's because people who accomplish goals at a higher rate than the average person are those who use a systematic, proven method of goal setting and goal attainment. Most people are unconsciously preoccupied with the fear of failure, which blocks them from setting clear, specific goals. If you don't set clear, specific goals, then you can't fail to achieve them because they're so vague. This is a major reason for failure. Teach. And that is to make your goals so real, to get, once you know what your goals are, to make them so real in your mind that it feels as if you already have them. When you get to that level where your brain actually believes it's already happened, something clicks. And oftentimes, within a short period of time, that goal becomes realized. The 80-20 rule says that 80% of your results will come from 20% of your activities. The 2080 rule says that the first 20% of time that you spend planning your goal and organize your plan will be worth 80% of the time and effort required to achieve the goal. Plan each day, week, and month in advance. Plan each month at the beginning of the month. Plan each week, the weekend before. And plan each day, the evening before. The more careful and detailed you are when you plan your activities and tasks the more you will accomplish in less time. The rule is that each minute spent on planning saves 10 minutes on execution. First step, but goal achievement is a continuous, lifelong process. That's what makes it so challenging. That's also why it's so extremely rewarding to finally attain your long-term goals. I recommend creating lots of objectives that can be accomplished in a month or less. Write them down. Read what you've written at frequent intervals. Keep track of your progress. And do something often that brings you closer to realizing these very short-term objectives. That way, you'll always have something to celebrate. These goals are not only important in their own right, they're also confidence builders and motivators toward a lifestyle based on perseverance and achievement. Uh, the power of being able to create something first in our mind. Everything around you in your life right now started out at one time as a thought. I mean, think about it. What are some things that you have in your life right now? Some relationships, some people, some skills, some beliefs, maybe a job that once was nothing but a goal. You're in that same moment now of creation.